Back home on the Lal Street, benchmarks ended at fresh six-month closing high. Nifty closed above 11,500, while Sensex 2 gained over a percent. Nifty Bank continues its outperformance, gaining 3,631 points in March series. Midcaps also rose over a percent, with the index ending the day over 18,000. So, Manglam, in March, the bulls had no control. So, what are the cues looking like for the new April series the that will be had starting? No control, you mean? So, I'm so sorry. Yeah, the bears had no, no control. Uh, well, the bulls really did march ahead yeah. in the March series. You know, uh, as we kickstart the April series, it makes sense to look at what took place in March. Uh, in the March series, the Nifty gained about seven and a half percent. The Nifty Bank stark outperformer there. 13.6% and it was high high beta which was doing well. So PSU Bank Index moving about 21%, small cap index moving about 12% itself. What did not perform well were the erstwhile defensive uh, defensives and the auto stocks. So auto index was lower and FMCG and Pharma also did underperform. When the Nifty gains about 7.5%, FMCG, uh, IT as well as Pharma not doing too well. It's telling you that the money is moving to high beta. Add to that, uh, March series now joins the big gainer series. March 2019, we gained about 778 points on the Nifty. This compares with all the way to Jan 2015, where we gained about 778 points. In point terms, this is one of the best series that we've ever had. And all of that is courtesy just one thing, the FII flows. Yesterday, too, close to 3,600 crore rupees bought by the FIIs in the cash markets. That takes this monthly tally to a whopping 32,500 crores so far. Now, I was looking through the data, parsing through a lot of years, and this looks like it's the highest FII monthly inflows in at least the last 12 years. Look at some more data, and perhaps this could be the highest FII monthly inflows ever. So that is something we'll definitely watch out for. But remember, it's not the start of a new series. It's also the end of, uh, of the old fiscal. So the last trading day of FI19, and while March series has been good for the mid-cap index and the high beta ones, the whole year has actually been good for quality. So the Nifty has gained about 14.5%. Nifty Bank this time has been led for the full year, has been led by the private banks. Mid-cap index and the small cap index has actually out underperformed. So let's see how that pans out. Uh, there are a fair amount of cues for the April series. There is a fair amount of conviction. The rollovers have been higher than the last three-month average. At the same time, the FIIs have rolled over 66% of their long contracts as against 52% of their short contracts. So that's telling you there is fair conviction in the April series. But there are also a lot of triggers. The biggest trigger, of course, in the very near term, we have uh, the RBI policy, which is on April 4th, the very next week. We have 2019 elections. That is the big imponderable for all of 2019. Voting begins on April 11th. Fundamentally, the th fourth quarter results start, and this will be very important to watch out for a lot of the consumer and auto companies, as we've been hearing management commentaries, and also watch out for some flows as the last day of the year ends and the new year begins, how that pans out. And finally, just one trigger coming in from uh, uh, the bull's perspective, Donald Trump's tweet. We, for India, the biggest thing would be if oil goes lower. And Donald Trump yesterday tweeted that it's very important that OPEC increase the flow of oil. World markets are fragile. Price of oil getting too high. So let's see how that com comes about. Absolutely. A lot of triggers as far as the April series is concerned. But what are the stocks that you're watching out for today? Well, we start out with the IT pack, you know, that is uh, fundamentally doing fairly well, which is seen from Accenture's second quarter results. Yesterday, the stock moved very high. And uh, about 5% odd overnight. They, the results beat estimates and they've raised their profit forecast. So let's see whether that uh, percolates down to our own IT stocks or not. The other stock I'll be watching out for is Aisha Motors. Now remember, uh, it, it has been an outperformer in the very long term, but now Bank of America, Merrill Lynch has downgraded the stock to underperform, cut uh, the target price from 26,000 to 19,000, saying that it's for the first time in a very long time that they've seen uh, dealer level stress for Royal Enfield. So maybe uh, this is something we'll keep an eye out on because bullet bikes were all over and they had a huge amount of demand. Adani Ports, a small acquisition there, close to around 331 crores in terms of uh, the EV for B2B logistics, innovative B2B logistics solutions. The equity value of the same would be about 43, 44 odd crores. Bharat Financials, they've assigned receivables worth 8, 837 crores to a private sector bank. So some securitization seen there ahead of year ending. TCPL packaging, a factory commenced production in Goa, March 20. 
28th. HIL, they've opened their first showroom in Shanghai. So let's see how that pans about. Remember, their domestic business is doing well. So how uh, China pans out going forward is something we'll be watching out for. Island FS Transport or ITNL as we know it, some bit of uh, 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 relief coming in. The High Court has dismissed petition filed by the National Highway Authority for damage claims of around 550 crores. And finally, keep an eye out on Jet Airways. That is a developing story. Any developing development we'll watch out for there. And two uh, IPOs opening today, Metropolis and Rail Vikas Nigam Limited. Absolutely. These stocks will be in focus today. But now it's time for a break. Up next, billionaire investor Warren Buffett talks about slowdown, fear, slowdown fears and sharp fall in Treasury yields. That's CNBC exclusive on the other side.